accounting for it in the day of judgment. For by your words you will be justified, and by your words you will be condemned. You be seated. On Mother's Day of this year, a family was celebrating not only Mother's Day, but a birthday of one of the members of the family. And a young man came into that household, shot and killed six people, and then turned the gun on himself and killed himself. <clears throat> But before doing that, he was telling those who were not killed, the reason why I did that was because you did not invite me. He was someone who had, uh, shall we say, worn his welcome out with that family. And today we see, that's not just necessarily that an uncommon kind of thing. Uh, uh, a couple of years ago in 2019, I kept a record as best I could from just the uh, the news blurbs on the homepage of Yahoo about all of the all of the uh, examples of of horrible crimes when people were killed and for what reason they were killed. I think one of the worst ones or the most meaningless ones, if you can, if there is a meaningful one, but one of the most outrageous was two sisters was watching television. And the sister that had control of the remote changed channels, and the other sister did not want her to change channels, and so she killed her for changing the channel. Now, I'm pretty confident that there's not a single person here who would be guilty of doing such silly things and horrible crimes against humanity such as that. And I think that we would all say, well, something's wrong with somebody that would do such an outrageous act against other people. But I'd like for us to focus for a moment this morning from our scripture reading that Jesus said that the mouth speaks out of that which fills the heart. And so what Jesus is saying is whatever is in your heart is revealed many times by what you say. Therefore, what we say reveals what kind of heart we have. And if you pay close attention to the scripture reading, Jesus asked the question, how can anything good come from someone that is evil? How can you say good things if, you are, if your heart is not right? it's very easy for us to stab one another in the back. We can kill the trust of others that they have in us. We can choke out our influence. We can hurt people deeply. And we can even scar people for life. And we can do all of that through gospel. May I suggest to you this morning that I think that this is something that every single one of us have done at some time or another. May I also suggest to you that it is something that is very easy for us to engage in. And also, may I suggest to you, as we will look in a moment or two at Romans chapter 1, that gossip is included in all of those sins that the Gentiles were given, were, were guilty of, and God turned them over to a reprobate mind. In other words, ladies and gentlemen, let me emphasize this one fact. That gossip is a sin in the sight of God, and we can lose our heavenly home if we continue to engage in that particular sin. First thing that we want to do this morning is look at what is gossip According to the scriptures in 1 Timothy chapter 5 and verse 13, it says, And with all they learn also to be idle, 
going about from house to house, and not only idle, but tattlers also, and busybodies speaking things which they ought not. Strong says that that word tattler means to be a babbler or a trifler, to berate idly or mischievously a tattler. Thayer says to indulge in empty and foolish talk. And Webster defines tattlers, rumor or talk of a person, sensational or intimate nature, to engage in or communicate idle or indiscreet talk. Paul, in writing to Timothy and warning him about babblers, also wants to emphasize that they speak things that they ought not. And a lot of times it's because, as you see the next word there, right next to tattlers, busybodies. Uh, 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 gossip, a lot of times, is involved in someone saying something very bad about somebody else and it's really not necessarily any of their business. They just are a busy body. They just want to say things about other people. And we'll look at why they do that in just a moment. As a matter of fact, we'll do that in just after we look at one other thing about what the scriptures see about, uh, about gossip. I was telling and talking with Brother uh, Salih about this particular subject, and he recommended that I use this verse but I cause it wasn't a verse that I had uh, uh, in my notes initially. But Paul wrote to the church at Corinth in his second epistle saying, For I am afraid that perhaps when I come I may find you to be not what I wish and may be found by you to be not what you wish. That perhaps there will be strife, jealousy, anger, uh, angry tempers, disputes, slanders, gossip, arrogance, and disturbances. Now, I have slanderers emphasized, and William Barclay in his work on New Testament works says that that word slander in the Greek is, uh, it means to openly speak against someone. Uh, uh, in other words, he goes on to say, describes the open loud mouth attack the insult, uh, insults and the charges flung out loudly and in public, the public vilification of a person. Well, that doesn't sound good to me. Especially when Jesus made it clear that if you have something against your brother, you're supposed to go to them directly and personally and deal with any kind of, uh, of uh, you know, dispute or if you just don't agree with them and you find that to be offensive to you, then go directly to somebody and talk, talk that out and get that resolved. And, and you know what happens about people who are guilty of gossip? They will do that justifying themselves by saying, well, I just wanted to make sure, you know, that I had the right attitude. I don't think that that's usually the case. And we'll see why in just a moment. But gossip, Barclay says, to secretly speak against someone. And he goes on to define it this way. One is helpless to deal with it because it is an underground movement of one who will not face the person spoken against. It is an insidious poisoning against someone who does not know what has been said. And again, that's in William Barclay's works of New Testament work, uh, book, New Testament work of words. In other words, the reason why gossip is so horrible, brethren, is because you are speaking against someone, and most of the time, it's against brothers and sisters in Christ. And you do it secretly, insidiously, behind closed doors, so to speak, because you're saying these evil things against a brother or sister in Christ, and you don't want the person that you are gossiping about to hear what you have to say about them. And what makes that even worse, I think, is when we come together in the, in the assembly and we're with one another, and maybe the person that you have just said some of these insidious things behind closed doors about, you know, you smile and you say, hi, it's good to see you, love you, brother. And yet you have made these, these indiscreet things that you have said against them, just you and somebody else, 
but not you going to them if you have a case against them. So why do people gossip? What does the scriptures say why people gossip? Doesn't make any difference what kind of definition I give or why I think people got uh, gossip. I, what does the Bible say? And it's interesting, Proverbs 26 and verse 22, the words of a whisper, whisper are like dainty morsels, and they go down into the innermost parts of the earth. Why do people gossip? Because they get pleasure from it. Now let's think about that for just a moment. Can you imagine getting on your phone or maybe in a kind of private text to someone? Now let's just confine it to the church here at Hammond. One of your brothers or sisters in Christ, and you get on the phone and you talk about another brother or sister in Christ that you meet with on a regular basis in the public assembly, and you say, some unkind, insidious things about them, and you actually get pleasure from doing that. Because, brethren, we don't do things that we don't like. What is it that we say a lot of times when uh, we have to, we're called upon to do something that we really would rather not to do? We usually say, I'd rather have root canal than to do that. You know, we do not commit the sin of gossip, unless we get some kind of good, some kind of pleasure, some kind of maybe building up of ourselves. And can you imagine a brother or sister in Christ actually calling somebody else up about you, make this personal, about you, and saying all kinds of evil things about them, all kinds of complaints, and then come on Sunday morning and in the assembly, act as if you love them dearly, as a brother or sister in Christ, there's a word for that, ladies and gentlemen. It's hypocrisy. And it's something that Jesus had a lot to say about in Matthew chapter 23. Addressing the scribes and the Pharisees, he addressed them as blind guides and hypocrites several times. We're told in Romans chapter 1 and verses 29 through 32, being filled with all unrighteousness, wickedness, greed, evil, full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, malice, gossips, slanderers, haters of God, insolent, arrogant, boastful inventors, and of evil, disobedient to parents, without understanding, untrustworthy, unloving, unmerciful, and although they know the ordinance of God that those who practice such things are worthy of death, are worthy of death, are worthy of eternal death, they not only do the same, but also give hearty approval to those who practice them. Not only do they say things in secret against someone else, we'll see in just a moment how and why that is so serious. But I have that last phrase there underlined because what Paul, by inspiration of the Holy Spirit, is telling the church at Rome it's not just gossips who are lumped in there with murders. You know, we talked about, and I mentioned in the, at the very beginning of the lesson, this guy that went in and killed six people and then killed himself, and we wouldn't even begin to dream that we would do something like that. And yet gossip is thrown right in there with murderers and all these haters of God. And not only that, but he says, that is, even if you don't gossip, if you're the receiver of it, if you listen to it without saying, wait a minute, that's my brother or that's my sister you're talking about, and you shouldn't be talking about them in that way. And by the way, in the future, if all you've got to do, if all you've got to say to me is to call up and make bad comments, evil comments, hurtful comments about my brother or sister in Christ, please just don't call because I don't want to hear it because it's sinful. It wounds people. It hurts people. The words of a talebearer are as wounds and they go down into the innermost parts of the belly. Uh, Charles Spurgeon 
one of the greatest denominational preachers lived in England and he had many wonderful works and of course he lived in that uh, that period of time where they spoke King's English and everything was very flowery and, and whatever. I have a book of his sermons and uh, the man could preach. He obviously didn't preach the truth about God's plan of salvation. But Charles Spurgeon, uh, Spurgeon said, tail bearing emits a, tree, a threefold poison for it injures the teller and the hearer and the person concerning whom the tale is told. One of the things, brethren, we need to keep in mind is if, if, if we can't really, if we're not concerned about gossiping against a brother or sister in Christ, you're not only doing damage to that person, you're hurting yourself. And you're hurting the listener. Maybe it's somebody that is not strong enough in the faith to where they will resist and say, listen, you shouldn't be saying those things, and I'd appreciate it that you don't say them in my hearing because I'm not, I'm not one to, uh, to receive that kind of com communication. It hurts people. It destroys prover uh, and trust. In Proverbs 17 and verse 9, he who covers a transgression seeks love, but he who repeats a matter separates intimate friends. We're told that we are to confess our faults one to another that we may be healed. And I believe with all my heart that one of the reasons why people who actually have sinned against God and it's known publicly, one of the reasons that they don't come forward to confess that sin, seeking the forgiveness of the congregation and seeking help from their brothers and sisters concerning that particular sin is because they're concerned about, well, if I tell everybody what I've done and some know it and some don't, but if I come before the congregation to confess my sin, and by the way, brethren, when you come before the congregation to confess your sin, do that. So many times, and when I was a young preacher, I would just get up and, and announce that so-and-so comes forward to confess that, their sin, that they have sinned. Other than those who are still young enough to where they're not accountable to before God, is there anybody here that has never sinned? You see, to tell, to tell the congregation, I have sinned and I need your prayers. That's not a confession, brethren. That's an admission. But all of us sin and come short of the glory of God. And one of the reasons why we are afraid sometimes to even come and seek help from our brothers and sisters in Christ concerning a sin that we're really struggling with is we're also concerned about gossip. And our brothers and sisters in Christ calling one another, man, did you hear that? I would never have thought so-and-so would have been guilty of something like that. And so they don't. When they desperately not only should, but need to tell us what they're struggling with. And it's so important for us not to do this, to not gossip, so that our brothers and sisters in Christ are confident that they can come before us and tell us, listen, I'm struggling with this. It's a sin that I haven't got a, a good hold of yet. It's something that is constantly bothering me, maybe not every day, but I can't seem to get a grip on this. I can't seem, I pray and I pray and I pray and ask God to help me, and I, I continue to do this. And I desperately need your help, your prayers, your encouragement, but they won't. And the reason why they won't is because what gossip does, it destroys trust. It creates strife. Proverbs chapter 26 and verses 20 through 21, where no wood is, the fire goes out. So where there is no tail bearer, the strife ceases. And where there is no whisperer, contention quiets down. We can just do so much damage by this business of calling one another and saying, did you, did you hear or did you know or did you see what so-and-so has done? 
And you just keep on going and going and going. And what are you doing when, when you're talking about someone, when you're gossiping? And we'll look at that in just a moment, too. Be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving each other, just as God in Christ also has forgiven you. Everybody knows my past history. And I can tell you, it's one of the most difficult things in the world to go in front of a congregation of people that you have sinned against in your sin against God and tell them specifically what you have done because they already know what you've done. But to say it yourself, to say, listen, I've done this and I've done this and I've done this. And I want your forgiveness. And I want your help. That's very, very difficult to do and it's made even harder when you know that there are some not all but some in the congregation that has a difficult time keeping things to themselves like dainty morsels they go down deep pleasure somehow or another there are those people who gossip and some way or another it seems to build their own self-esteem for whatever reason at the expense of someone else and the worst of it all is against a brother or sister in Christ we must keep our hearts pure if we're going to stop being guilty of this sin Proverbs 4 verse 23 keep your heart with all diligence for out of it proceed the issues of life the good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth that which is good, and the evil man out of the evil treasures of his heart or evil treasures brings forth that which is evil. For out of the abundance of the heart his mouth speaks. That's just Luke's rendering of the same thing that is recorded in Matthew chapter 12. We need to be careful, ladies and gentlemen, about the purity of our heart. And if you ever have the inclination to call somebody else, somebody up and start to say maybe just complain or whatever with someone maybe a brother or sister in Christ for someone else <laughs> just because they're not a Christian doesn't mean that it's okay but we need to make sure that we recognize that what we're doing when we do that is we're revealing what's what kind of heart we have we're actually telling everyone this is the kind of heart I've got, and Jesus called it an evil heart. One that we need to take care of more closely. We need to ask God for help with this. And the reason why I wanted to say this and include this this morning is because this is a tough one to overcome. Because you can be talking with somebody and everything that you're saying is just fine, but all of a sudden something enters into the conversation and it just progresses into gossip. And it's easy to do that. And I have tried and tried and tried myself, and I will just be the first one to admit this morning that I'm guilty of this sin. I know I am. And please, if I ever fall prey to it again, if I'm talking to you and I start talking against someone, please be loving enough to say, Bill, <laughs> You preached about that. You know, preacher, heal thyself. Because I don't want to do it. It's an affront to God. That's the worst thing. But it's also offensive and hurtful to our brothers and sisters in Christ. Set a watch, O Jehovah, before my mouth. Keep the door of my lips Incline not my heart to any evil thing to practice deeds of wickedness with men that work iniquity. Let me not eat of their dainties. You remember that one about the, the tail bear? It's like dainties that go down into the inner parts of the... Yeah. Let me control. You remember what James said. James said that it was almost impossible. As a matter of fact, anybody he said that can control his tongue. This is a complete person. This is a spiritually mature person that, does, that recognizes 
just how bad gossip is and that it is a sin and it's hurtful and it tears down people and especially your brothers and sisters in Christ. How else can we stop it? We need to ask ourselves these questions. First of all, is it true? Now, it might be true. But even if it's true, doesn't mean that it can't become gossip, that it's not something that you should be doing. We should be, need to ask ourselves, okay, this is true, but for what purpose am I sharing this with somebody else? For what purpose did I dial that phone number, and when the person answered the phone, I started talking with them, and then I said, oh, by the way, did you hear da-da-da-da-da? And it's true, absolutely true, everything that you say, but why are you telling them that? What is the purpose of this gossip that you are guilty of? Is it helpful? Are you trying to edify somebody when you do that? And I think that we understand that by the very definition of gossip, it is not edifying. Gossip doesn't build anybody up, including the person who is gossiping. It's a horrible thing. Does it build up or tear down? Will it help the congregation be stronger? Is it necessary? Is there any reason why exactly you feel compelled to call somebody up and say, you know, I heard so-and-so this, did this or said that or whatever, and you're just, you know, constantly talking about what somebody else did? Well, was it really necessary for you to share that information? Was it for a good purpose? Is it kind? Is it out of love? In other words, what's the motive behind what you're saying? How does gossip affect you? And before I read the passage of scripture that I have for that, brethren, look around you. And pardon me for just a moment, but there's my Bobby. How I've missed her. But look around it at you. Who's here? These are your brothers and sisters in Christ. These are the people that we are to love above everybody else on the face of this earth. Our spiritual family, in case you miss it in regard to what the Bible teaches, our spiritual family is even to come before our biological family. Why? Because we're children of God. We're in God's family. And we are to conduct ourselves to the glory and honor of God. And I'm not saying that it's okay for you to gossip against your own biological family. I'm not saying that at all. But your brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, are supposed to come before everybody except God. They're the ones that we appreciate more than anybody else. They're the ones that we need to love greater than anybody else. We're the ones that every one of us are supposed to have absolute confidence in all the rest of our spiritual family that they're not going to mistreat us. They're not going to gossip against us. They're not going to do anything that would harm us. And everything that we do, we do for the benefit of our brothers and sisters in Christ. So how does it affect you when you do engage in gossip? Jesus himself said, and I say unto you, this is from our, our scripture reading, I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give an account thereof in the day of judgment. For by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be justified. Condemned. I don't know how Jesus could say it any more plainly than that. That brethren, that which comes out of our mouth comes from the heart. And it can, it can, can condemn us to eternal damnation. The reason why I wish to speak and to share this lesson with you this morning is because Last year was a horrible, terrible, very difficult year. And I don't know if you've ever thought about it or not, but it was a very polarizing year. 
And there were these people on this side that believed that one, this is the way to handle our situation. And there was others on this side that said, no, this is the way we need to conduct ourselves. And, it's, and, it, and it separated us, brethren. It separated us. It caused us to not be meeting with one another of one heart and one mind like we should. And I'll just be perfectly honest with you. I think one of the things that caused me the greatest, the greatest heartache is because we had Brother Dale and we had Brother Tom doing the very best that they could. And if you remember correctly, they had been elders for a total of five weeks when they had to deal with the biggest problem that the Lord's Church has, has had to deal with in my lifetime. And every preacher and every elder that I have ever spoken with, every single one of them said the same thing. We're doing the best we can to deal with this situation because I don't think anybody knows how to exactly how we're supposed to deal with it. But I will share this with you. There are many, many congregations, preachers from other congregations that I have spoken with, and they have told me, I wish that the church that I'm working with had followed y'all's example and stayed open because that's what the Lord desires. And unfortunately, Tom and Dale both have had to endure people angry because they disagreed with their, their decisions and some unkind things were said about them. And brethren, we are to have and hold our elders in extremely high esteem because they've got the most incredibly difficult and important job, way bigger and more important than the President of the United States or anybody else because they're watching out for our soul. They're trying to help us get to heaven. And they did whether you realize it or not, obeyed God rather than men. <clears throat> not forsaking the assembling of yourselves together. And the mandates that a lot of people felt like was absolutely chiseled in stone was from government people who have turned away from God so bad that it's not even funny. Our nation, ladies and gentlemen, under the leadership that we're currently experiencing is not helping us get to heaven. But Dale and Tom are. And I praise them and I thank them and I pray and thank God for them. But they had to endure some very unkind things. Please, please, let's not do that anymore. Ever, ever again. Let us not talk against one another. If you have an issue, go to that person. That's what Jesus said. To go to that person personally, not over the internet, not texting them or whatever, not any of that silliness, face to face. And I don't say this to be mean, but ladies and gentlemen, I, I feel compelled to say this. If you don't have the courage to go to a brother or sister in Christ personally, then please don't say anything to anybody else. Because if you don't have the courage to face your brothers or your sisters in Christ, maybe you have a reason to go to them and to bring it to their attention, something that you feel is wrong or that they've done some wrong. Please love them enough to go to them, but don't talk to somebody else and say, tell them how bad you think that they're doing. It's gossip. It's sin. And it'll keep you out of heaven. Plain and simple is that there's a lot of ways that we can sin against God this is one of them and this is one of those ways in which we need to seek God's forgiveness and if you're a Christian what you need to do is you need to go to God in prayer and say you know what I never thought about it before but I recognize that I've been guilty of gossip and I seek your forgiveness and I seek your help that I won't ever do that again if you're not a Christian you need to be one. 
We just enjoyed, and it was mentioned by Brother Dale at the, when he was making the announcements this morning. We just enjoyed one of the best gospel meetings we've ever had here at this church, as far as I'm concerned. And it wasn't just the title or the, the, the content of the lessons. It's the way that Brother Sally introduced those thoughts. And we enjoyed a wonderful spiritual renewal and revival of how important it is for us to put, that, put forth maximum effort in our relationship with God. Let that maximum effort involve and include watching our mouths. And if you're not a Christian, hopefully you were paying attention to what Brother Sally said, and you'll pay attention this morning to what I have to say. That is, Jesus Christ died for you. He left heaven only and specifically for you. You have to make it personal. And he paid the premium price for your sin so that you could be forgiven. He died on the cross bearing the judgment of God for your sin. And if you cannot realize how important it is, not only for your sake, but for Jesus' sake, for what he did for you, the invitation song that Brother Steve has uh, selected is on bending knee, but notice on bending knee, I come. If you need anything in regard to your relationship with God, or if you don't even have a relationship with God, especially, will you not come and allow God to save you through the blood of his son, Jesus Christ? While together we stand and sing this song. On bending knee. 